irrespective of my transgender sex worker, irrespective of my homeless, my rights is my rights as a South African citizen and as a transgender woman. Even though it's a broken building, if government can only offer us that, only for this COVID-19 outfit, we will gladly appreciate it. And I mean, it's not only Cape Town, the CBD, or Woodstock, that is homeless transgenders and trans sex workers, because I know from Cape Town until Paul Wellington, I mean, it's over 200 trans people that's living on the streets. How come government can't? I wish I can just have, even though it's a broken body, just a safe space that we can say, no, this is a space for us and where we can feel safe. We can a safe space for trans people. Living in Grimstown, the, uh, the place that I was born and bred, because I was black and trans and Khalsa and African, so they think that being trans is a Western disease. <laughs> and it's actually African. Uh, I'm black and trans and proud, and I didn't let anybody to take that special energy away from me because I knew that I was proud and the fact that my family is the people of tradition so they rejected me because they must um, the people of, tra of tradition that I are supposed to go to the bush just because I was possible so they thought that being trans it's a western disease or it's a white people's disease they thought that you're disgracing us you, what people are gonna say about uh, uh, are you and you also supposed to go to the bush and something like that and yeah of course I felt like suicidal I thought of suicidal thoughts and thinking to kill myself or something like that thinking that I'm such a, I'm an outcast or something like that I left Eastern Cape because of family rejection and community abuse I've made my own life continue and I uh, come across with uh, prosecution to provide for myself and I get into prosecution. When I matriculated in 2005, uh, one year at home, uh, the age of 19, I didn't feel comfortable uh, of being a male because I want to be a woman and because I'm from a Muslim background, my family didn't accept that. So I just took off two days after my birthday when I turned 19. Uh, I packed my stuff and I left and I left him, uh, I wrote him a letter and I said, this is who I am, this is who I want to be. I can't be, love uh, somebody that I don't want to be. I'm a, I want to be a woman and I took the train from Kraifonte, don't know where I'm heading, and the train stopped at Cape Town Station, and I just got off with my luggages, and in Adley Street, through the Golden Icon, Adley Street, I saw people the same like me, women, trans women. I was sitting there crying, lonely, and two of them came and proud of him. Um, girl from where is Jay? En hulle my gesien hou, en as verduidelik ek vir hulle sê hulle vir my, ons is een groot familie, is welkom. Ek is Selene, um, ek het groot geraak in Seres. Um, Dit is een klein dorp, so 10 kil kilometers uit Seres, Prins Alfred Hemelit, dit is waar ek groot geraak het. So, in, in 1999 het ek myself bevind dat ek um, verlief geraak het op een man en um, as een trans vrou het ek besluit dan gaan ek ook maar nou achter die liefde en ek bevind my toe op die pad ek ook my oor uitveer toe sit ek in een groep van trans vrouwe 
here at the Strandfontein um, sports facility where the city of Cape Town's homeless are being housed for the duration of the lockdown period. Arriving in Strandfontein, yeah, I, th I thought about myself that, about my safety and how I'm gonna, you know, um, manage to, you know, to spend the whole night uh, with these people on the same time that I don't know. And I usually have my own space when I'm sleeping. I left Eastern Cape for about 10 years ago. I am still experiencing the same they call it transphobia and I experienced some transphobia in Transfontaine there are these guys that are actually on my case every day like throwing remarks on me and stuff like that the guy always throw remarks on me and one day he actually um, attacked me and he beat me so bad he actually, you know, um, defeated me because he was actually a guy. So he actually beat me very, very badly. So the law enforcement came. The law enforcement didn't do anything. I felt lonely. I felt, I felt defeated. I felt shut down. I felt mute. The fact that I didn't, I, I, I didn't have any say. What am I going to say? Who's going to say on my behalf? Because I'm just a transgender, homeless, sex work woman. I was so terrified. The, the way that I was so terrified, I couldn't even speak properly. He actually hurt me so badly. Beating me like he was actually beating his peers. I felt mute, I felt discouraged, and I felt like uh, hopeless. COVID-19 affected um, our trans, homeless transgender sex workers community um, in a way that I don't understand because business is poor, we can't go out on the streets. People in the community, they don't come feed, they don't feed us. We don't get clients. Um, the only people that we're depending on, on is sweet. Um, sex Worker Education Advocacy Task for NGO, Gender Dynamics, Triangle, people that deal with the LGBTI community that supports us by feeding us, buying groceries, making sure that we are still safe. Some of my sisters, and it's very tragic and hurtful because when the lockdown started, we lost one sister already under the bridge. Another sister has been sick now, um, is in hospital, was also living under the bridge now for two weeks, still in hospital. So we are breaking up. I don't know what's going on. I'm praying. I'm asking God what's happening. So it's affected us and we don't have a safe space. It's very hurtful. And especially when a, one sister comes to me, what to do? Look at the piece of bread, and I know I don't get. But then we will sit and we will go scar, we will go hustle, irrespective of whatever. You understand? Sometimes we even do recycling, or because of the scope and I just to get some bread. You understand? So for me, it's, 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 it's difficult, and it's also that government don't reach us, reach out to us as the trans community because definitely I don't want to go into the shelter because I'm a transgender woman, I'm a woman. I don't want to be in a male storm. So that is where we got rejected. So yeah, government is there for us. It, it for us totally a full ecosia means I don't like for my full ecosia means my ecosia means and my minute no stair Die COVID kom, to verlangt het die woorden wat mijn ma gezegd. Ik ga niet altijd daar weer zijn. 
die kalwik het ons allemaal geskeer. Ons trans woman gaan nie die reik gebuk gaan nie. Ons gaan feit. Daar is licht. I'm hoping for once this coronavirus is gone, women like me, so that we can stand up for our own feet and working for our own money, we sex workers. We not just to live out of out of handouts. You know, we work hard for our money.